Thanks, uh, Franco and Ryan, for um, that very detailed look at uh, what you've done with SOA. So, what I was um, going to talk about today was one introducing new tech to those of you who um, haven't met us before, and just raise the uh, the conversation up a little, little and generalise um, some of the learnings that have um, come out of of the um, activities that uh, Ryan and, and uh, Oracle and ourselves have gone through. So just to start, we're a technical implementation specialist uh, with offices in Melbourne, Sydney and Ho Chi Minh City. And what we, what we focus on is uh, integration, BPM, legacy renewal, uh, agile project delivery in a, in a SOA context as well. So um, we're about four years old with about 120 staff um, throughout the country. So that, in a nutshell, is RenewTech. What I wanted to do in terms of raising it is just look at how organisations approach SOA and some of the, some of the ways they do. Um, there are roughly four different ways um, that you can generalise that organisations will come towards uh, a SOA. One is an ad hoc approach where you might have developers building a bunch of web services in the basement. Um, another way is uh, uh, problems around integrating various applications to, to um, move data um, along a process between them. Thirdly is, is looking at business process enablement and how that, that works within the business. And finally is, is taking a look at the, the business architecture and, and really trying to uh, model the systems and technologies underneath that and the, and the, the, arc, the business itself um, in a, an agile and, and service oriented way. But sort of no matter which, which one of these approaches, what tends to happen is, is taking a very top-down approach. So um, depending on where you start, you tend to go from your concepts to your implementation. So if you start too low on this ladder around application integration ad hoc, it makes it very difficult to understand and engage with the business on their terms. So and at the end of the day, the A in SOA is all about architecture. So as we've heard um, from Ryan's discussion, you know, what the business is interested in is a couple of things. Either increased revenue or reducing cost. And to do that, they're looking for new opportunities, um, improving the effectiveness of their processes, or improving the, the efficiency of their operations. And so there are various types of architecture, and just um, for those in the audience, just to set some um, uh, baselines in terms of, when I talk about business architecture, I'm talking about the structure of the enterprise, the, its customers, its operations, its finances, its divisions, how it, how it works as an organisation. Not a technical architecture in terms of you know, what systems talk to what. Um, and SOA really encompasses all of these things, starting at the business level and go, driving all the way down through into the technology. And we think the, the success, successful implementations of SOA really have to start at that business level and, and with that business engagement. So, in sort of uh, distilling the, um, the process and the, the journey that, that SOA is, uh, particularly with the work that um, has happened at AVL, you know, there, there's four main steps um, around successfully introducing SOA into your organisation. First is really understanding the business. And I think having you know, listened to Ryan talk uh, this morning, you know, he has a keen understanding of the business which has been built up over many years. And that, that understanding of the business, the business architecture, the components that drive revenue in your organisation really provides you the architectural direction for implementing SOA. Secondly, when you go to build out on this, you want to implement things, uh, implement things incrementally and learn while doing. So as we've seen, you know, there's multiple stages on this journey. Uh, if you bite off small um, bits at a time, you can take the learning from that, modify your behaviour and your approach and then before you move on and build credibility within your organisation before you move on to the next one. Um, and starting with high value, high profile tar um, projects to gain that business trust that you can deliver something, that you're going to be delivering business uh, value to the business so that they will you know, fund the next stage of development. And finally, you know, migrate as the business needs or progress as the business needs dictate. So as we, we heard, you know, ABL is made up of a number of acquisitions investments, divestments of, of organisations. So these are opportunities to, to exercise your architecture and, and implement uh, additional components of it um, within that framework. But there's you know, a lot of roadblocks on this journey. Um, 
business engagement is a key one. If you don't have an engagement with the business, you end up doing a technical implementation, you know, you're going to run into a lot of problems about funding because you know, the business is not going to see any value coming out of this. They also, you know, they might get the, the story about plumbing, but they, they can't see it, so they can't, they don't um, provide much uh, importance to it. Education and understanding by the business is, is obviously key as well, as well as technical impediments such as the skills and product expertise you may have in your organisation, um, a lack of experience, you know, not knowing what you don't know, so um, not having the battle scars having done it before, um, failure to build a lack of momentum or failure to build momentum in the organisation by taking a long time to deliver anything, you know, and and really just a capacity and a focus. So, you, you know, many IT organisations are already running uh, fairly tight to the bone. Um, so if, if you want to introduce a, an additional layer of, of, um, of uh, projects and, and technology implementation, often it's difficult to um, find the focus to enable that to happen. And finally, you know, there's project, project challenges as well. You know, sole projects are complex. Uh, they're, they're complex, um, decentralised architectures. You've got multiple development teams. Uh, the enforcement of interfaces and standards is, is difficult. So good governance is really important, as well as good process models and good business understanding. And and the you know the between different systems and between different groups and divisions, um, the same terminology may have very different semantics, and and it makes it extremely difficult to come to a common understanding about how things work.